Hey everybody, hi, it's Shari Kotti here. I want to thank you for supporting my channel, for your liking, subscribing, commenting. Oh my goodness, my last video got quite a number of likes. I got a lot of reviews, people telling me, oh, this is just so timely. Um, the content was just what we needed. And I just want to say thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. God bless you richly. Um, a few friends also reached out to say that they would like to know the lessons I learned from the books I chose. Uh, remember I told you about two books I was going to read for November. Um, the Smart uh, Money Tribe and about communication. The second book was about communication. So I did read these books. However, let me be honest with you guys. I haven't finished the communication one, but I have finished the um, Smart um, Money Tribe. I mean, like, money is involved, that be so. <laughs> okay, so this video is going to be about my review on those books and simply to tell you what my November looked like. And, you know, let's just chat. Okay, so let's start with the books. So these were the books I was going to read. Oh my, okay, I thought it was upside down. These were the books, one and two. These are the books I was going to read for November and uh, the Smart Money Tribe is the one I told you was about um, making big money moves, big small money moves, how to manage your money, finances and why I liked the idea that the writer wrote it as a form of novel so you can find your character, you can find yourself in the characters and this The Art of Communication is written uh, you know, to help you know the right time to speak, the context of speaking and much more. But this is the one most people wanted to know so much about and the first thing I will tell you is whatever I tell you about this book is based on my opinion, what I have learned, the things that I intend to use for myself. So I will simply say you should get a copy and read it for yourself because we are all in different financial levels we all have like the financial financial thoughts we have our worries and concerns right so everyone can find themselves in this book even though the characters in this books are in this book uh, are females I think it covers both males can also learn one or two things from this book but my three major lessons from this book is that it's first um, black tax. The concept of black tax basically means, um, okay, so here in Africa, we are more of a communal um, people. That means we look, we look into our family. We are, you know, family concerned. Uh, we have extended family, mother, father, and all of those things. And most times, you have the tendency where the working class is carrying unnecessary pressure, or no, it's not unnecessary, it's more like um, pressure, financial pressure that is beyond their resources. And so, there's a likelihood that the demand is so much that what you have to give out cannot even um, cater for your own needs, talk less of even saving. So it's like as you're earning money, you are dishing out to solve family issues, to send money to a brother in school, a sister in school, um, your mom, your dad, a relative, support this, support that, mission, community, and all of those things. By the way, this is not wrong. However, if you don't, uh, the book tells us that if you don't have a structure behind it or a structure to help you to guide yourself, there's a likelihood that, of course, you are always going to be on the shortage, which is a lot of the most problem most working class in Nigeria is suffering today. Because say you're earning a hundred thousand, you send money to your family, you send, you pay your your tithes, your offerings, and all of those things, and then you no, know, there's a likelihood that you don't even have enough to to save. So it's like at the end of the day, you're hoping that another better money will come so that you will save. To be honest, it's 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 kind of like a risky place to be in, if I should you know to say that. So the book author says you should have a structure. What does structure mean? Structure simply says that there should be a process to which things are done. So what are you putting your money into? Which demand, which request is of most importance, right? 
what can you cut down what can you do instead of monthly what can you do in three um, in the space of three months like you do this three months you go to the next three months stuff like that so um, the, the, the writer says a structure simply guides you to make the right decision for example let's say there is a wedding there is um, someone that is sick and then someone that um, probably needs to go back to school and let's say the wedding on the wedding request um, is perhaps for you to maybe buy a dress you know get the ashray B and then let's say the sick person is pretty sick and you know oxygen is needed and let's say you have uh, the one who is going to school who isn't your direct relative more like um, an, um, a niece a nephew kind of so the structure simply says you should consider which is of paramount um, necessity is it the sick person is it the ashray B or is it the person going to school and then decide on the amount you can give you honestly most times we think we can solve everything we cannot solve everything you simply have to give what you can give because if you don't consider yourself at the end of the day you are the one that is going to suffer so that's why we have a lot of people going into debts because of you know they don't really decide on the amounts to give and they don't consider what needs to be sorted out also it's not a crime to say no the um, writer says not a crime to say no which I really agree on as much as you want to help you have to know when you can help there was such, uh, there was a picture that was once painted to me when I was in school the person said you cannot be in the well and try to rescue the same people in the well with you you have to first come out and then when you're out of the well you go and get a strong rope that can easily carry the people pull the people out and then you're sure that you are firm enough to pull right so that simply means that if you cannot then you don't have to go the extra mile except in health or some really good emergencies but you don't have to you don't have to do some things that you cannot afford to do at the moment which it's required so it's okay to say no and to decide on what is important at the moment also the author talks about supporting um, perhaps having like a savings account or a certain amount which monthly is dedicated to family needs and all of that and making sure you stay within the confines of that amount and also suggest that there is um, a kind of little amount of funding here and there you store in that savings which you could use to support a family member who has a concrete business idea and who looks like they know what they're doing you know so those are just like some of the suggestions which um, the author gave and I think they're really important and worthwhile um, advice the um, second lesson I learned from the book is the importance of friends not just friends but having friends that are um, that that are looking at the same thing that you're looking at so if you're looking at developing or building your finances so you have to have friends that are doing the same friends that are doing the same or that are or, that are there already and then they can help you you know excuse me help you push you through that's something um, you also talked about the author said that your quality of friends tells your wealth and friendship is important you don't have to have all wealthy friends now that that's not it I actually look forward to making a video where I talk about uh, the different kinds of friends you should have there are friends that are necessary for uh, friends that are not financially there but they can give you support friends that can help you build your spirituality and much more but however imagine if you have a community where you have just you know all of it spiritually mentally emotionally physically financially they're just there that's 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 important 
the third lesson I learned is uh, in making money, in trying to save money, in trying to build your finances, it doesn't mean that you don't spend on yourself. So a lot of tendencies I see sometimes that some people save, save so much and then they don't spend on themselves. Now that's wrong. You should treat yourself right. You should have at least an amount. The um, author suggests 10%. You should have at least a 10% that you, you you spend on yourself, you do something nice for yourself, you take yourself on a brunch, go have a, a drink or something that just makes you feel good. To be honest, I have tried this before with a friend of mine. One of, one of the Christmases, past Christmases, we decided to do something nice for ourselves. We spent three days in the hotel and that three days we actually got a very good deal and we stayed three days in the hotel. We went to some really nice restaurants we had been looking forward to and I realized that after that experience, by the time I came back the next year to work, I was inspired to work. It felt like, God, I need to work to, to make it in life, you know? It doesn't feel like you're working for, you're slaving for the world. It feels more like, you know, your life is just some sort of balance. So do something nice for yourself, reward yourself. It's very important. The fourth lesson I learned is, uh, saving shouldn't be that difficult now most times savings looks like you are oh, I spoke to a boat rider one time Let me, fun fact real story and I was telling him about how I met another boat rider that said um, he he saves at least 2,000 naira per day and that right now he's looking at almost almost a millionaire from just carelessly dropping 2k 2k every day now this other boat rider i was telling was like oh my god that that's actually not difficult for him because i mean he can do one or two things he can the 2000 naira is not difficult for him to save but that many times he's he he finds himself going back to the money many times he he finds himself you know when there's a family need or an emergency he ends up you know going back to it and all by the time we began to discuss in detail and go into the discussion, I realized that some of those things he was um, calling emergencies were something that he really didn't have to, you know, put his resources into it. And they, they were not necessary, let's put it that way. It's something he could have simply said no to and, you know, everyone has a balance here and there. So. The thing about saving money is not that you need to do it like on a big scale. You have to, saving is more of a habit than the money itself. I think most times we're focused on the money that we don't realize that it's more about the habit of putting aside. Now, you can start with really small amounts, small amounts that is enough to buy you a bottle of drink and just push it aside. The truth is, the more you see the amount is growing, the more you feel inspired. You feel inspired to save more. You feel you feel there's sort of an, accom an accomplishment when it comes to putting money aside, to be honest. I really love it. So you should try it too. That's the concept about saving that I learned from this book. But it's not as if I learned it from the book. It was more like something that the book uh, re-emphasized. And that is so, so good. So guys, these are the major lessons I learned from this book. There are other lessons that I learned also, but I think these are the ones that are of great importance to you and to me as well. So in general, November, um, okay, so my November was full of um, um, uh, weddings. I went to as much weddings, many weddings that I have not gone to this year. Um, Oh, and bears. I now have new dresses that the weddings um, afforded me to get and it was great. It was fun to go out for weddings. Normally I'm not really a big fan of going to weddings. I, I really feel exhausted by the process. Sometimes I rather just send the support than to go. But I'm learning the importance of relationships like really investing in relationships now and i see that when you go support your friends and family on those their important days you're really 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 doing a lot so going for this wedding was i was intentional to 
actually show to actually extend a, a hand of support a, stand, a hand of relationship to the new couples you know and that was that was it actually some weddings were not even like my family members they're more like a friend sister or a friend friend or a friend but you see all of those things just have a way of you know making people feel like oh i am actually important enough that you could leave your weekend to come celebrate with me and that's something you know we should intentionally do you may not go to all the weddings yes but maybe it's important to understand the importance of really keeping to relationships or keeping up with relationships now i think one of the things i need to learn also is to call people like call people check on them have like really long conversations with them that feels like really boring and stressful but I really need to work on my relationship so that's what I did in November I went for weddings I partied with friends I kept relationships and read my book went to a few places and um, planned my next year remember I told you about the five years plan so yes I reviewed some of it and um, putting some of the structures in place it was just fascinating so yes, what is December going to be about? Well, I've told you first and foremost, keeping relationships will be it. So uh, calling, checking on people, loved ones will be definitely something I'm looking forward to. I look forward to the Christmas. I look forward to, of course, eating rice and eating food and so many more. And it still doesn't mean that I wouldn't be developing myself. Um, however, I wouldn't be doing so much of it in December um, so yes that's it I'm simply going to be winding off the year and um, closing up the tabs of the year that I'd opened closing the chapter of 2022 and looking forward to 2023 so guys what will you be doing in December I would like to know in the comment in the meantime thank you so much for watching this video thank you for supporting this channel thank you really guys i appreciate your kind gesture and effort listening to me burning that data is a lot thank you so much and see you soon ciao